name is Craig Kaiser. I'm the president and co-founder of Landgate. I'm going to go over today uh, a little bit of a demo of how to utilize the Landgate marketplace and the tools we've created to help you sourcing deals, whether you're looking to buy a piece of property and maybe you have a 1031 that you're trying to put to work or you want a land bank or you're looking for uh, a property to put a house on. All of those different use cases apply to Landgate, the marketplace, and the tools we've created. So again, like I said, the goal is to not demo and make this a marketing pitch for uh, our company and our product. It really is to show you what tools exist as you're going out and doing due diligence. Again, whether you're a property owner or you're a real estate professional, and we're going to go through those processes. So if you've never heard of Landgate before, uh, we are a bit of a unique marketplace when it comes to real estate. What we've done is we've blended an enormous amount of energy and natural resource data, and we've pulled the real estate environment in together, and we've kind of mashed them together, and we've created a completely new and unique marketplace. Um, the big thing that most folks who've never heard of us before that they really like is we're somewhat of a self-listing type platform. So we provide enormous amounts of data and analytics, and I'm going to show you that here. But as far as the property owner or the real estate professionals, our marketplace is free to use. So it is a free to list marketplace. You can list property that is for sale. That means anybody who's selling a piece of property, whether that's in an MLS or a non-MLS listing, the property owner or the pro or real estate professional can list those listings up on Landgate. There's no commission, there's no fee and there's no obligation to accept any offers. You are truly driving the ship um, when it comes to your listing. You can edit it at any time. You can delete it at any time. Um, when you get a deal and you close the deal, you can close your listing at any time. You're the one managing that listing. You're in complete control with that. People usually ask what types of listings can they put out there? Um, anything from property for, sa for, for sale, um, different types of cash flows that are for lease. Most landowners don't realize that you can sell the cash flows of different types of resources on your property, whether that's minerals for an oil and gas well or um, solar cash flow from solar panels or wind turbines for uh, uh, wind cash flow for wind turbines. You can sell all of those separate of the land. So you don't actually have to sell any real estate to be able to sell those resources. Landgate has provided a marketplace for you to do that. Um, but what we're going to be showing you today is um, both what a public, a free, all you have to do is come to Landgate, create an account, you don't have to pay us any money, what you get to view and see and interact with on the website, and then our Land App tool, which is $10 a month and the features that you get with that. Um, but again, on the listing side, you can create a listing for sale, or you can create a listing to lease your property out, or if you're a real estate professional, lease your client's properties out to generate revenue, either for carbon credits, mineral rights, mining rights, land and recreation, or agriculture, or water rights. So it's not just about selling, it's about generating cash flow on your property. Again, there's no fees, no commissions utilizing our platform. Uh, the tool itself will cover that a little bit. Uh, what you get for that $10 a month is uh, nationwide property boundaries and ownership information across the US. That's over 150 million parcels. We don't do it by just state by state. We give you the whole country. Uh, and then you get access also to some exclusive types of listings that go up on the marketplace. And you also get access to um, what we'll spend a little bit of time on the value and risk indexes, right? That's part of utilizing the system. It's an additional due diligence check on any piece of property, whether, whether you're buying it or you're selling it. If you don't know about this information, it's somewhat of a guess on either side of that equation. So we'll cover that a little bit. Uh, we get a, a access to data layers. Um, you can create as many property reports as you want, unlimited amounts, and you can create your own custom maps. So that is the end of the sales pitch, if you will. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into, uh, and, and I think uh, Michaela and Jordan, they're also on the call. They work here at Landgate. Um, they're going to be sharing here in the chat. They're going to share a link to this page. This is where you can 
get started if you'd like. Uh, you do not have to. It's a critical critical component here. You do not have to subscribe to Landgate, pay us any money to create a listing. Right? It's it's a fr absolutely free thing. You have to create an account so that we can verify who you are, make sure that nothing is fraudulent, um, and you can post that listing without having to be a subscriber. But if you're interested, um, there will be a link that uh, goes out in the chat that Jordan will be putting on here, and feel free to go here at any time. So that uh, link just went there in the chat. When you get into Landgate, what you're going to see is a module very, very similar to this. So this is exactly what you're probably going to see. And you're going to see these dot, these pins across the United States. These pins are active listings uh, throughout the United States. So if I, when I look at listings here, I'm going to zoom out. I can go ahead and create some custom filters for the types of listings that I want to see. So you can see over here on the top left, I can either look for listings that are for sale, or I can look for listings that are for lease. and I can toggle between them. When I am a land app subscriber, I do get access to properties that are available for leasing for minerals or mining or carbon credits. I do not have to be a subscribed user to see listings for sale for land in, uh, or land for agriculture, recreation, water rights. I also do not have to be a subscribed user to see listings for land for sale. If I'm a subscribed land app user, then I can go ahead and see mineral rights that are for sale or water rights that are for sale. But I can start out by going ahead and filtering some of the options here. I can filter on acreage, minimum, maximum sizes. I can filter on a price. I can filter on counties, states, counties, um, by who the listing agent is. There's all different types of things that I can create filters for and start doing some property searches. So let's jump back over and we're going to go ahead and just explore this user interface a little bit. Depending on what section of the United States I'm looking at, it's going to automatically start filtering down the listings in the area that I'm looking at. So as my uh, computer catches up here, these listings that are gonna populate over here on the left are going to be determined off of what my 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 screen uh, viewing area is here. So I can see the information. I can see all the different types of listings that are for sale. Here I can click on them and do those things again. If I want to filter off of certain types of listings that I want to look at, again I have kind of have my buyer's hat on right now, looking out there to see what types of properties are available. So if I wanna look in, maybe there's a property where I want to buy a, a 40 acre lot somewhere, maybe put a house on it, I can set those filters up and I can whittle down those types of listings based on exactly what I wanna see. So here's some examples of what some of these listings look like. So here's a listing, I believe this is in Mississippi. I can see the images for that listing here. I can scroll through them. Um, now that's great. There's a ton of listing websites that do this. Uh, there's nothing super special about that. What is very unique about Landgate is all of the data that I'm going to show you here in a little bit, we append that to every single parcel and every single listing. So when I click on that listing, and let's say I'm even relatively interested in maybe purchasing that, I'm going to go ahead and click these value indexes. Now, these are proprietary indexes that have only been calculated by Landgate, um, but it's going to give me a breakdown from a zero to 100, the relative value of the land, the solar energy potential, wind energy potential, EV charging, carbon credits, all of the different potentials. And I'm seeing this straight away because I'm signed in for $10 a month and I am a land app user, I'm gonna go ahead over here in my common layers on the right side, and I can toggle between my ownership, parcel boundaries, things like that. If I wanna clean this map up, I can, but I'm gonna start digging into this listing. I'm gonna click on the land portion, and you're gonna see a bunch of data load onto the map here. 
Now, what that's loading is actually what the land use is on this property, and it's giving me a breakdown right away that there is 1.8 acres of woodland. There's some evergreen forest here. There's mixed forest. There's a little bit of woody wetlands there, and it's giving me that breakdown. I can go back and actually look at, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to look at this other land data. It's going to give me some uh, information about annual wind speeds, temperatures, slopes on the property. I'm going to jump back and I'm going to, again, my value indexes, I'm going to click on the solar energy portion. And let's say maybe I'm looking at this piece of property as, okay, this is great. I might be able to put a, a cabin on here, but is there any additional value here that maybe somebody doesn't know about? And that's what we're talking about here with the solar energy. This is giving me a very, very high scoring a 96 on the potential solar energy. Now, if I zoom out on this, you saw a bunch of data load onto the map again. Now, this is a different data set, and it's all attributed to this specific parcel. So it's telling me how many acres I'm losing to dwellings, how much is in a tree canopy. And for all of these other, what would be called exclusion zones, which would exclude certain acreage for this revenue potential, if I clicked on, uh, if any of these types of exclusions were on the property, I'd see how many acres would be there as well. So I'm starting to get some information here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and keep digging in. I'm gonna click on my solar electrical infrastructure on this tab. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and it's gonna, again, show me some information. So I'm seeing transmission lines, I'm seeing a substation, substation transmission line, and it's feeding me back for that specific listing all of the information specific to that to that listing for the substations, transmission lines, and solar farms. Now, why is that important? Why do you care about that? Is because when we clicked on that parcel and it loaded all of these different indexes, for each one of these indexes, we have an algorithm, an AI algorithm that actually runs as if a engineer or a geologist or electrical engineer or an environmental scientist was running a full analysis on every single one of these different types of resources for this exact listing. So the data that's here that's providing that 96, it's taking into account what is the price of the power going through those transmission lines? What is the interconnection? All of the things that I don't want to and really understand and don't really care about. I just want to know what is the relative value here We've broken that down for all of these different resources. So let's just go through here and go through a couple more. Um, for instance, go ahead and take a look at the, the mineral value here. And we can go ahead and say for oil and gas value, where are the nearby oil and gas wells? It's going to return those nearby oil and gas wells about six miles away from the nearest producing well, 3.8 miles away from the nearest abandoned well. It's going to feed back some, if there was production nearby, it's actually going to tell you what the production of those wells are on that property. So again, I'm digging through very quickly. I found a piece of property. It's available for purchase. And I'm starting to dig in on the value proposition on these different types of, pro uh, on this specific listing. I can click on property features here, and it's going to go ahead and start giving me some more information. It's going to show me um, uh, different, it, different Data layers there when it comes to slope topography, it's going to tell me, um, this is a really, really cool data set. It's gonna tell me the tree species on the property, how many trees per acre, what's the diameter, average age, things like that. And then it's also going to break down for me the soil types on the listing. So there within a few minutes, I've done a very robust due diligence on this listing that's out there. And I know a very good, I have a very strong understanding of what's actually being provided outside of the typical pictures, things like that. So I understand more about this property than most likely the listing agent, the seller, all of those different things. Again, I have my buying hat on right now. The next piece of information that's very interesting is going to be these risk indexes that we calculate on the property. So when I click on second here, the same way we did the, uh, we provided all of that information back on the, on the value indexes, 
What LandGate has done is also calculated uh, risk indexes for variables and attributes that most people never really consider. So for every single parcel, every single listing in the United States, what it does is it's going to go ahead and, and there's a very large algorithm running right now, but it's gonna break down for me the oil and gas contamination, industrial contamination, blackout risk, cost of electricity, and it's gonna show me all of those different risk indexes on the property as well. So again, we're gonna go ahead and go through a bunch of different listings, just so you can kind of see what is available out there on the website. Here's a listing down in Fort Worth, Texas. This is a what some folks would look at and say, boy, this is a very tough looking property, but you can read through the descriptions there. And there's a lot of different potential for this piece of property. And that might be true, but I want to go ahead and start digging in and start understanding some of the data that's available. So I can click through the risk indexes, the value indexes, and I can understand, start understanding uh, what all of the different value propositions are there on that piece of property. So uh, again, here's another large piece of property that we were looking at. And very quickly, I wanted to understand, this is a, I mean, a sizable piece of property here. This is 600 acres. And I, quickly understood if I'm looking at this piece of property, whether I'm trying to land bank this piece of property, uh, again, 1031 exchanging it, maybe I have just had a windfall and I'm looking at um, just parking my money somewhere. I can dig in very quickly. I can see here if anyone's aware of who Wirehouser is, I can see who my neighbors are going to be on this piece of property. And again, I can get a really quick breakdown. If I'm trying to buy this piece of property to probably put a let's say a solar farm on or a battery storage farm, that previous property we looked at was a 96 on the relative score for solar. This one scores a 13. Now I found that out very quick. I can see here that there's 595 acres available on the listing, 281 is what I can actually put solar panels on. So the majority of this property, I actually can't put solar panels on and this is giving me the breakdown as to why. How much acreage is in flood zone, dwelling, topography, things like that. I can go ahead and flip over to my electrical infrastructure and you're not seeing a whole lot nearby. So if I keep zooming out and it's even providing me the data back, my nearest substation is 4.3 miles away. Transmission line is the same distance. So we're a long ways away from getting to transmission here but that's told me that that information has been provided back to me very quickly because in the indexes, I can see that really quickly. I can see, okay, I'm it. Let, let's say the, the seller here is wanting to make me pay a little bit of a premium for whatever reason. I can go back to them and say, well, wait a minute. I don't think there is a lot of solar energy potential and I'm going to show you why what I can do once I've got into this listing report, I can go ahead and provide this information back, and now I can start having my conversation negotiating back and forth. So that is what we're looking at there. Again, when we jump back over to that previous listing, we've gone through the value indexes. Now we're looking at the risk indexes here. Now these are risks that most people would never consider when they're looking at either buying or selling this piece of property. This one does not look too bad at all as far as oil and gas contamination, industrial contamination, blackout risk. However, if we come down to some of these other things, some of you out there might be thinking cost of electricity, what are you talking about cost of electricity? This is a proprietary index that Landgate uses to calculate what is the likelihood that your electricity cost is going to increase over the next three to five years. So in this area, it's, it's fairly high. Most people would never understand it. Across the other side of the county, it may be in a completely different scenario, but now I know that. So if I'm going to put a house here, and let's say maybe I'm, I'm being very ambitious here and I want to have a, a heated pool there and all of that power is going to come from electricity, it's not going to come from propane. Well, this might make my decision process a little bit different there because my cost of electricity, it may be low right now, but the chances of it going up are significantly high in this area. Um, it also, if I have that same mentality, if I wanna go ahead and maybe have something that's gonna pull a lot of power, 
to buy this piece of property. That's something that may be an issue here because I don't, I'm getting a score of 68 on the electrical connection. To upgrade my power might be a challenge here. Uh, drought risk, fairly low, wildfire, very, very low. Um, but then we can go through here, hurricane risk, fairly high, tornado risk, very high. Um, so again, I've spent just a few minutes reviewing. I First of all, I've sourced this listing. I've taken a look at this listing um, on Landgate, and I've started doing due diligence very, very quickly. So that's utilizing the uh, platform and the marketplace for the listings that already exist. And again, if we go back through um, and we take a look at some of these different types of listings, it ranges from people listing and selling single family homes, thousand acre ranches, lakes for sale, all different types of properties that are for sale here on the on, on this, this, uh, this marketplace. Now again, all of these listings, all of that data that you were that we were looking at, as far as the value indexes, risk indexes, things like that, you get all of that for free. You do not have to subscribe. All you have to do when you go to Landgate and you start clicking through on the listings, and you click on the listing, you do have to create an account so that we can verify who you are and you get access to all of this data for all of the listings that are out there in the public view. For the folks out there wondering, like, okay, well, I, I'm, I am a subscriber. What types of listings do I get in addition for that $10 a month that I'm paying? And let's go ahead and go through a few of those here. Um, several of these listings are, are quite unique. Most of these don't ever make it into an MLS. They don't ever really make it into a, a, a marketplace at all. You all, whoever's subscribed to Langit, you get access to these listings. So um, I just went through and Again, set some filters very quickly about what types of listings I wanted to see and went ahead and clicked apply and all of those listings came up. And we'll go through a few of those now. So here is, this is an interesting listing um, out of Colorado. Uh, there is a individual that is selling mining rights for sale on about 80 acres. And you can see here, uh, it's a unique opportunity. So for the land professionals out there listening, or even the savvy investors out there, here's the types of opportunities that prior never really got out to you because they were always hidden behind. Uh, there was no marketplace for them, number one, but the ones that were charged enormous brokering fees, very, very expensive brokering fees that took money out of the pockets, out of the actual brokers who went and got the deals for them. In this case, this is a listing that came directly from uh, the operator of this uh, gravel pit themselves. You can see there that there's gravel on the ground. There is some equipment on the ground. There's a, if you read through the description here, there's a couple different options for them. They want to either sell the equipment along with it, the scales, the shakers, the screens, things like that, or you could just buy out the, the mining rights straight away. So that's something that uh, you get access to. We'll click through a couple more. Um, this is an interesting one that's up in Idaho. I believe this was posted by a uh, real estate professional up there where um, they're actually open to having a, a, a mining uh, in this area. And what's interesting about that is when you, I believe I had a conversation with this gentleman, um, he was just going to sell it outright, and we pulled up the information on Landgate, and we pulled, we clicked on mining. I'm going to let this load here because I want everyone to see the actual data load here and, and and why the landowner, the seller, and the real estate professional looked at it in a little bit different light here. Is there is if we click and we zoom out a little bit and click on the mining resources. This is all a sedimentary alluvial site. When you mean alluvial, it's, it's, it's sand essentially through here. There was a gold mine right here at the uh, top of the property. And the landowners were not aware, oh, excuse me, the gold, gold mine is right here. You can see that little dot. Um, so there was actually a gold mine on the property at one point. Land professional went back to the landowner said, hey, what if we just go ahead and create a listing to the mining community out there and see if they'd be interested. So they are in some conversations 
there with that. So there's a, another mining uh, opportunity there. Here's an interesting one, some water rights for sale. Um, some more water rights for sale. And this is uh, in California. So really interesting uh, scenario there. But, um, you know, we can go through, there's literally thousands of these different types of listings that you can access to. And it depends for everybody uh, who the buyer is, what are they interested in? Some people might be interested, how, how do I get into buying oil and gas mineral rights? Well, this is a very good way to do that. Here's 60 acres for sale, 60 mineral acres for sale. You can keep going through here, some more water rights. Uh, here are some oil and gas royalties for sale. So these look to be like they are um, seven wells on the, sacred, on the South Baker unit, and they attached a video for it. So you can go ahead and watch that video. You want to go ahead and get into buying active oil and gas wells. Here's a marketplace to allow you to do that. Uh, so that is the marketplace. One other thing I want to show you is if I jump back over here, and let's say I'm not interested in looking at active listings. I'm an off-the-market type buyer, and, and I, I don't really want to act, participate in bidding wars, things like that. What I'm going to do is forget about all of the active listings. So in my listings tab that I have pulled up here, I'm going to turn my listings off. I'm going to click on this property reports button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Let's just zoom into a random area here. I'm going to zoom in here and let's say I want to purchase some property in this area. Again, I'm going to make sure that all of my ownership information is turned on, uh, that all of my filters are set the way I want them to. And I'm going to zoom in here will be just south of Waco, Texas here. I'm gonna zoom in, see my parcels load, and I'm just going to click on one of those parcels. Now, again, I'm a land app user. I'm subscribed. I can get this data and information for 154 parcels, 154 million parcels across the United States, as many as I want. I can add parcels. I can make complete uh, parcel sets so I can add these together and get the indexes. If you are not a land app user, you can get one report for free every day. So same way we were looking at those listings, I clicked on a parcel and it went ahead and ran that AI algorithm, ran a quick breakdown of what is the relative value for these different parcels. So again, I can go through and take a look at the different land use types. It's gonna automatically populate the data for me here. And I can see the breakdown of that specific parcel, how much pasture land we have, how much woodland we have, all of those different types of resources. And let me go back here. And I can do the same thing. Go ahead and take a look at solar, it's scoring a 67 on the index. I'm going to go ahead and click solar information. I'm going to click on this here. And we're going to go ahead and see we don't have any structures there. This is what some people say to us is like, okay, well, I, I'm only worried about uh, parcels that have structures and rooftops and things like that on there. So in that case, I want to go ahead and find out what the rooftop solar potential would be on a piece of property. So I'm going to uncheck this box by clicking on it. I'm going to zoom out and we're going to go closer to uh, a more urban area. Maybe we'll look at a single family house. And we'll take a look at the data and information that we have there. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this guy here. This is Rosa Marie Moores. And if you're on the webinar, which I doubt, but uh, hello if you are, uh, we'll click on the solar and we're gonna go ahead and click on our information. I'm gonna uncheck that one, we'll do this one here. Give me one second while this loads. We're going to click on solar energy again. We're going to click on our rooftop solar. And you can see, again, data is going to load immediately when I start looking at that. And you're going to see the actual rooftop outline. It's going to tell me how large the rooftop is. And it's going to give me a breakdown here of how many megawatts it's going to generate, how many overall megawatts it's going to generate throughout the year, and how many tons of CO2 that can actually offset. And then it's going to tell me my overall revenue that I can generate from that piece of property. 
So it doesn't really matter what type of property you're looking at. There's data and there's analytics that are important for every piece of property with the land gate system and, and all of those different things. Um, one other feature before we start getting into the Q&A here, I do want to show you, I'll just go to a, we'll go to another random area so that you know that uh, this data is valuable across the United States. We'll go ahead and we'll go into Alabama because we've been in the Western part of the United States for a while. I'm going to go ahead and click on this parcel. Again, I want people to understand how quickly that map just loaded. This is 154 million parcels loaded on one map. And I just quickly zoomed out, zoomed over, and here we are, now we're starting to dig in. Another really good solar uh, potential area here, 84 for this index. We're gonna jump over uh, and we'll take a look at where the infrastructure is. We're seeing a transmission line running through the property. All of that, it's great. But let's say I don't want to go back through and generate and take a look at all of those things. And I want to go ahead and export a report for this piece of property so I can save it on my computer, whatever. All I have to do is click this export button. I can customize this report, include or exclude any type of data that I want. And I can go ahead and click export. What those reports look like is, and we're going to go through like, four or five different ones. You can see this is a report that was generated for a ranch here in Colorado. There you can see very quickly a breakdown of the indexes, the risk indexes, and all of the data, the technical data is stored for each one of those sections. So there's your land use data. Here is the overall property features. If this was a more urban uh, residential area, you're gonna see all of the amenities loading here, how many restaurants you have, EV proximity EV chargers, things like that, um, topography, trees, all of the data that we were showing you in the user interface in the app is downloaded and put into these reports. So the really cool thing about that is I can go ahead and make reports for all of the listings, again, I'm an off the market buyer, or I'm, maybe I'm a property manager, whatever it is, my use case is, I can now compare all of my properties side by side. So let's say maybe I own this ranch in Colorado, 473 acres. I can quickly see where I have high value, low value, where I have risks and where I don't have risks on this piece of property. Let's say I also own this commercial real estate building in Pittsburgh. I can see relative high values, relative risks on this piece of property. Back over to a farming piece of property in Colorado, I can see where I have values, risks, and then all the way down to a luxury home in Los Angeles, right? So there's a, there is a very nice piece of property right off of Long Beach, California, and I can go ahead and see something very quick. Where's the relative value that might be hidden, but where's theirs? Where is there elevated risk that might be hidden? I would guarantee the owner of this $3 million luxury estate in California has no clue of the extraordinarily high risk of oil and gas abandoned well contamination on their property. Prior aware of the natural earthquakes, but there's additional risks here. Again, when I compare all of these different properties together, or even just doing due diligence on my own property, I'm finding out about things about my property that I didn't know before. So these, these reports are very, very easy to generate for the real estate and land professionals out there. These are completely customizable. I can upload my logo. That's from our friends at M4 Ranches. Um, there's Dan Murphy. Uh, he has given me permission to, to, to use his smiling face on these for demonstration purposes. But he can white label this report and they do. They do a very good job with these and it turns into their report, whether they're trying to get a client, whether they're providing this as a as a uh, uh, you know a present for the closing of a deal, here's an additional report, or they're just routinely checking in with their clients every year. They're gonna go ahead and whoever they've bought and sold a piece of property for, here's an update on your property, here you go, and keeping that relationship open. So there's a lot of different ways to use this data and to depending on what type of hat you're wearing, uh, listening to the to the webinar, there's a lot of different ways to utilize this system. Take a look and see what listings are out there that are on the market. 
also take a look from an off the market perspective when you're going out there green fielding and trying to find your own listings to purchase, you're going to know more, most likely you're gonna know more about that property than the people who are currently holding the asset. So uh, without further delay, we'll go ahead and get into the questions, the Q&A a little bit. Um, let me see if we have anything in the chat. Um, looks like Greg has a, a comment here. You're showing listings. What if you were looking to take a listing of land and this data be used to determine if you were willing to take that property as a listing without inputting it to Landgate? Yeah, so Greg, that's a good question. Um, we were showing some listings there, right? Let's say uh, there's a land professional on the call, real estate agent, broker, and you, let's say I'm the broker and I'm trying to get Jamie L. Sharp as a client. She's considering selling the property. Maybe she's not considering, but I'm a land professional. I know that there's potential here. This thing is scoring an 84 on the solar index. One way or another, I can provide information to this landowner if I'm a land professional, right? So I can go ahead and export that report. I can customize it. I can make it my report and I can present this to her. Hey, here's an opportunity. My name is Craig Kaiser. I'm a land professional. Here's some information. Would you like to uh, potentially make money on your property or interested in selling your property? If you're interested in selling your property, it's a very difficult conversation to have. So a lot of doors get shut in people's faces by having that conversation. Whereas now I can have a conversation saying, hey, my name is Craig Kaiser. I'm a, I'm a real estate professional here. I have some information on your property. Here you go. I've made a very nice report. It's got my picture on it, has all of this information. Jamie, let me know if you have any uh, have, have any questions. Most likely what's going to happen after a few days of reading through the report, they're going to call me back and say, hey, I'm, I'm interested. What is this going to cost me? How much is this going to cost? Now, this is not legal advice. We are not attorneys. We are not uh, tax accountants. None of this can be constrained as legal or tax advice. From that point on, you're, you're a real estate professional, and you're going to be representing that person to try to get their listing, uh, to try to get them get them a deal. Me as a real estate professional, I'm going to go ahead. It's easy. It's very, very easy. I, all I have to do is click this create listing button. It's going to send me into a funnel. Let's see, maybe Jamie's interested in maybe doing carbon credits, solar farm, and maybe battery storage. She just wants to make money on a property. I'm going to help her do that. I'm going to create the listing. So when I create a listing, it's going to look something very similar to this. When I click contact seller, it's going to be my information. Whoever creates the listing, it's their direct contact information. There is no pass through. There is no uh, selling the lead to someone else. We direct, directly connect the potential buyer with the potential seller there. So if, if Greg, you're the one creating the listing, this is your contact information. Uh, energy company and the world's largest energy companies utilize this system to find leads and find landowners, that energy company is gonna reach out to you and say, hey, I see your listing, I'm interested in it. Uh, can we send the offer to you? And you work that relationship with your client, your fiduciary, the same way you would with anyone else. So um, I hope that clears that one up. I'm gonna jump over to some questions or some, some answers, Q and A's here. Um, again, if you have any questions that you would like to submit, please go ahead and send those into MB at Landgate or go ahead and ask in the Q&A. Um, we're gonna go ahead and answer a couple of these. With respect to solar development, why is it critical to be close to a substation? It seems like being close to a transmission line is most critical as long as it has capacity getting substation in the location. Am I missing something? Uh, Mark, no, you're not missing anything. The it's it's going to vary depending on what is more important based on the size of the property. For instance, let's say you have a 15 acre parcel. It's completely buildable. You found that out on Landgate. You clicked on the parcel, 15 gross acres, 15 buildable acres, and there's no exclusion zone, right? You found that out. But then you also found out how close you are to transmission lines and substations. Let's say for that 15 acre parcel, the developer's gonna to have to balance how much money are they going to generate from that, that solar farm, and they're gonna balance that between how much money they're gonna to have to pay to get connected into the grid. 
the easiest way to be connected into the grid is through the substation. If the substation has enough capacity, let's assume that, that it does for the sake of this argument. The substation is like an enormous wall outlet. You can pull electrons off, you can put electrons on through that, that wall outlet. Now, if it's a smaller piece of property, you want to be really close to that outlet because the further you are away, it erodes the economics of a smaller solar or battery storage project, okay? Now, if you have, take a similar situation, but you have 1,500 acres, an enormous plot of land, and you are a significant distance away from the substation, but there's a transmission line running through the property, the developer may look at it and say, okay, well, I'm going to be spending $150 million anyway on solar panels for this property. Solar panels are incredibly expensive. That's, that's not an unrealistic number for a solar farm that size. So I'm going to spend $150 million developing this solar farm on roughly 1,000 acres here. The cost of putting in a substation is maybe a million or a million and a half, maybe $2 million on top of that. I don't really care about that. I have $150 million in panels. This is a really, really good site. Maybe I only have to deal with one, two, maybe three landowners here, and I have a thousand acre solar farm. I'm just going to go ahead and build my own substation because I have, I, I'm right next to the transmission line and it has capacity. So depending on the size of the property is going to be a huge determining factor on how close you need to be to the substation. Very, very large parcels, they'll build their own substation connected into that, to the transmission line. Smaller parcels, especially when we talk about um, what's called CNI community, or uh, excuse me, a commercial and industrial solar. So rooftops on large Amazon distribution centers, uh, solar panels on top of, of uh, uh, parking lots, things like that. You're going to need to be close to something that can consume the power, which is on top of a building, so the building can consume the power. But if it's more of a vacant lot of vacant land and you're talking about community solar, you don't really care about the substation because community solar is being used really, really close. So even a small parcel, if it's far away from a substation, can still be viable. So that sounds like a lot. I'm sure people are out there, well, holy cow, okay, you're saying this one thing and now saying another thing. The best thing you can do if you're a landowner out there who is interested in any of these types of resources or a land professional out there or a real estate professional out there who has a, a, a property owner or a client that's interested in any of those resources, just create a listing. That's why our model is so unique is it doesn't cost you anything. We're not you don't even have to be a subscriber to go ahead and create those listings. Can I guarantee you that you're going to receive offers and uh, get closing deals and be the hero for your client? I cannot guarantee that. I can't make a site any better than it actually is. The thing that we've done that I think is very unique is create the marketplace to allow that interaction to happen in the first place. I can tell you people might be asking how active is the marketplace? There has been... In the last two weeks that I'm aware of, probably over, and I'm going to be conservative on the number, probably close to 4,500 to 5,000 acres closed and leased across multiple different deals on Landgate just for solar. That doesn't include carbon credits. That doesn't include battery storage. That doesn't include EV charging. That doesn't include any, any of those. It's an incredibly active marketplace. Um, so that's the best way to get offers. That's the best way to get Another question, how do I get the best price? Get into a competitive market, number one. So I hope that helps, Mark. Uh, we'll go to the next one. Uh, Jordan Johnson asks, does this show land values increasing or decreasing over the years? Of how many years of a contract for solar uh, wind are they on? So Jordan, really good question. What it's going to do, Landgate has proprietary land values where it's going to show what is without any improvements, without any improvements on the land. We don't in, include any improvements, development potential, things like that. What does the ground sit at today? What is it being used for? And what, based on the different types of land use on the property, how many acres you have of each, and what that land use sells for in that county or local area, that's going to give you the, the raw land value for every parcel. So there's that, that hope that clarifies that. And then the years of contracts, it's a really good question. 
And I'm going to breeze over it quickly, but um, Jordan and Michaela will put some links into the chat where we go through in a full hour, very in-depth. Actually, the webinar we had last week was really, really good. A uh, landowner and a real estate professional in Colorado talking through their thought process of some wind leases that's on their property, solar leases, and things like that. So if you're interested, Jordan and Michaela will put that in the chat and you have some time Listen to that. It's a really, really interesting conversation. Uh, but typically, wind solar leases, they're long term. Um, they'll start as an option period, three to five years. Once the project begins and serious payments start flowing on the property, you're looking anywhere from 30 to 45, 50 years of potential cash flow. Again, if there's someone on the call who already has done that and has cash flow on their property, that cash flow can be sold and that cash flow qualifies for a 1031 exchange without having to sell any property. So we have a couple webinars on that as well if you want more information on that. Uh, David asked, I'm an investor, can I get across the land that has solar farm potential in my area in New York? And if so, how do I get started with Landgate? I missed the first seven minutes. Well, David, let me fill you in. Um, first of all, thanks for helping me out with the, the house cleaning there because this is gonna be recorded. You will all get a, a uh, a recording of this sent to your email. Um, but when it comes to solar, New York is very, very, I mean, you look at how much energy and power the state of New York or even just the city of Manhattan uses, it's an astronomical amount of power, right? So uh, quick disclaimer, we are for, as Landgate is an organization, we are for all sources of energy. All energy is really good energy. Um, it needs to make sense depending on where it's at. So. Solar is very hot in, in New York. Sites are very difficult to come by. So if I put my investor hat like on, just like you, David, what I'm using Landgate for on a personal level, what I use Landgate for is if I'm going out there and I'm buying real estate, I want to make sure that I'm buying the real estate for fair market value, that I'm not overpaying and hopefully underpaying a little bit on it. But the only way I can know whether I'm not overpaying is by understanding the potential additional values. And that's where those value indexes will come in at. So when I look at a piece of property, I look at it and say, okay, I think this is a fair deal based on what everybody knows, based on what everybody's looking at here. But I'm gonna pull up all of these different values. If all of the values are low, then I'm gonna look at it and say, I might, even though I think that I might be paying fair market value for it, I just found out that I'm overpaying for it because there is no additional unknown value there then I'm gonna turn on the risks and I'm gonna take a look and see what potential risks that I did not consider may be on this piece of property. One way or another, I'm gonna understand whether I'm getting an overpriced deal or an underpriced deal because I folded in an enormous amount of additional variables there. So that's number one, how I would look at it from an investor. Um, but that's how I would use Landgate. Again, I you, you get access on, for every single parcel, if you're just looking in New York, but you become an you become a property expert across the United States with the tool. I don't really care where a deal is at in the United States at this point. I used to just buy in my area of interest because that's a, that's what I knew. Now I don't have a problem. I look at deals in Washington, Florida, uh, northeast part of the country, Montana, Texas. It doesn't matter because I already have more information than the folks that are holding the asset. So that's me putting my investor hat on is it's a, it, it is the due diligence tool for, for real estate. And that's how I would leverage it. Um, Damien asks, if I have land and want to determine the viability of using it for solar farming and the revenue potential, can this help us get that information? Yes, absolutely. So um, put my property owner hat on. If I own a piece of property, I can go to Landgate just as we did before. I click on that property. Now, I don't have to be a subscriber to get access to that. As long as I have an account, it's free to create an account, I can click and I can generate a property report on one parcel for free. So I can go ahead and generate that. So you only, if, so Damon, you only own one parcel and you wanna see what the potential is, just, it's gonna give you a breakdown. What is the potential for a solar farm? But then what is the potential if it's a smaller piece of property? And let's say maybe you have a building on it or you have a house on it, What's the potential for generating income and revenue from the rooftop, or if it's a commercial site from the parking lot, things like that. So it's gonna give you a good breakdown of that. And you're gonna get an understanding very quickly. Is this something that you wanna spend time and effort on? 
And the same thing for all of the other potential resources. If you get one of those resources that has a high index value, the next step, simply create a listing using your account, put it out on the marketplace and see what the market's willing to do. Um, can we post land available for solar company if we to use if we agree in our negotiations? Absolutely. So that's so that's another question from Damian. That's ultimately in a nutshell the special thing and the unique thing about Landgate's marketplace. If you're mildly, even slightly curious about what type of revenue potential you can generate for your property, that's what Landgate was generated for. Click on your parcel, click create listing, and then a few minutes later, that pin goes up. Now, again, you are in charge. You're driving the boat on that listing. If you want to delete it at any time, delete it at any time. But folks who see that resource, let's say you've listed your property for um, hiking. you got a nice property in New York, and it's not really being utilized, but you know people would want to maybe come hiking or backpacking or bike riding on it or something. Well, I would go ahead and create a listing for recreational purposes to generate revenue on it. Again, there's an enormous amount of types of resources you can generate revenue from property, um, switching gears there into a more commercial or residential uh, type area. You can also look at it. Can you generate revenue from rooftop solar, uh, parking lot solars? Can you put an EV charger there? We do the EV charging index. There's all different types of uh, potential indexes there or resources that you can generate revenue. You just need to be aware that the tool exists to help give you that information and then leverage that marketplace with your listing. So it looks like there are several in, um, we have, let's go ahead and go through a couple more here. How does it get the data? That's a good question. So Landgate's been in business for about seven and a half years, coming up on eight. And we pull from over 500 different uh, sources that link directly into the data, directly into the data that you'll get when we were clicking through the different values and you click on land or solar or mining or water, whatever it is, you get all of those data sets from across the United States fed into your map, whether it's on, a, on, on your, your mobile phone or on a desktop or laptop, that gets fed there. So it's an enormous amount of data. It's over three terabytes of just our own custom data on top of the three terabytes that we're pulling in. So it's an enormous amount of data. And the technology that our platform's built off of is not a GIS-based type platform because it would break. It would does not work. As I was panning around the screen and things like that, you could see that all of that data was being fed nationwide and you can and it performs very, very quickly. So um Another question, how can property owners like myself use the ownership information? Why is that important? Uh, for me, I was a longtime subscriber of a, uh, an application that provided landowner information and property outlines for just a single state. And I was paying, I think I was paying like $15 a month for one state on that. And I lived, I used to live in an area where I was kind of close to a state boundary. So I was paying like $30 a month to just see the ownership information. I want to know who owns what. If I'm looking at a piece of property from an investment side, whether I'm you know, a, 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 a legitimate type of investor who has $50 million and I'm going to go ahead and buy this, 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 and this, I want to know who the neighbors are around that area. I want to know, and even if I'm going and buying a house, I want to know who is around my property. I want to know what the boundaries are, things like that. So that's how I personally utilize the data. There's hundreds of different use cases out there of what you might find interest for um, those use cases. I mean, you might be someone who likes to go backpacking. You might be someone who um, might just be interested in figuring out what is going on in the neighborhood, things like that. But that's what Landgate offers on top of all of the additional uh, pieces of information, the indexes, things like that. It lets you know a lot about what's going on either around where you live or outside of where you're trying to make some investments. Um, another one here, I don't own any vacant land, but I can, but can I make money from the property I currently live on? That's a really good question. Um, that was Angie from Kansas. So I appreciate, appreciate the question. Uh, absolutely. 
don't just narrow down the view and the perspective that you have to have an enormous piece of land to make money off of your property. You can make money on property with, with the transition that has happened or the additionality of different energy resources that's happened uh, within our energy makeup in the United States in the last five to 10 years, there's a lot of different potential. Like I said, you know, we go back and we look at, um, and we'll do that here very quickly. Um, let me do this. And we go, again, looking at this screen capture, I'm looking at all of the distribution elect electrical lines. I'm looking at all of the footprints of the rooftops. All of these buildings have potential to generate income. All of those buildings, all of the houses, they all have the ability to generate income. Again, the next answer, the next question, well, how do I do that? If I own a house here, I own a house anywhere, and I see that, yeah, I could generate X amount of megawatts, megawatt hours this year, and I can generate some cash flow. How do I go about that? It's very simple. You click on the create listing button. A few minutes later, your pin goes up. And if anybody out there who's interested in leasing rooftops or putting solar panels on rooftops, they see the listing, they're going to reach out to you and you can go ahead and negotiate that deal. So it doesn't take thousands of acres. In a lot of cases, all it takes is a couple, maybe even less than that, depending on what you're looking for. So uh, the use cases span every type of real estate that's out there. It spans residential, it spans commercial, and it spans what you know, folks would consider luxury slash land type real estate as well. Uh, another question here, if I list a property for lease for solar, do developers see my listing? Uh, that's a question from Dan. Dan, appreciate that question. Absolutely. So I breezed over to earlier. On the other side of the equation, for all of those different resources, all of the developers of those types of resources are also utilizing the platform the same way that investors are looking to, with their buyer's hat on, looking for properties. So they see the listing. So if Dan would go ahead and create a listing and he's got X amount of acres on a nice piece of property and he creates a listing, he's essentially raising his hand in front of all of those types of energy. In this case, it would be a solar developers. All of the energy and solar developers that are out there are going to see Dan's listing. They're going to do their due diligence, utilizing the same data that's available to you. They're going to if they like it, they're going to click on that listing and they're going to call Dan straight away. So Dan has been connected. He doesn't have to have a Rolodex and an enormous network of carbon buyers, of solar developers, of oil and gas developers. He doesn't have to have a, a, an enormous pipeline of farmers or ranchers or hikers or any of them. The marketplace is built. The marketplace is built so all of those people get connected with the listing that they most most uh, want to view there. So. Uh, that's a very good question. Very good question. We are at the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and see if we have one more question. Um, let's go ahead and go to the chat. Okay, I think Jordan took care of that one. One more question here. Are the one free report a day for non-subscribers by parcel or filter? So that's a good question. Uh, again, from Damien there. Um, the one... Free report. Let me just show you because there might be some people wanting to see how that how that works. Let's just go ahead and do this, and I'll show you how that works. So when you land into Landgate, I'm going to uncheck that. When you land in Landgate for your first time, whether you um, have a subscription or not, you're going to see something very similar to this. When you create an account, you're going to see yourself logged in here at the bottom left. When you're on the property reports tab, the top left, all you have to do is go in, click on a piece of property. And again, that algorithm's running. All of the things we've been talking about, all of the data, that's what's being gener generated right now. Enormous amounts of calculations. And boom, there it is. So you're going to be able to get this once, one a day, but you have to be logged in. You have to be logged in. And to get this information on listings, you can get it for every listing, but you have to be, you have to have an account to be able to see that. Not a subscription, but you have to have an account to be able to see that information. So here it is, again, to export the report, go ahead and click this export button. You're gonna go ahead and go through a funnel. You'll name the report. Um, 
You'll do all of those things and you go ahead and export that and there's your report. To create a listing from there, it's also very easy. You click this create listing button, you go ahead and click that button and I can go through this funnel. I'm gonna go ahead and I can add parcels. Let's say I missed another one. I can add another parcel if I want. I can remove parcels and I can go ahead and start going through this property and create a listing for what I want to do. Do I want to sell the property? Do I want to lease resources? Let's say I maybe want to lease this property for um, all of the resources. Let's say I want to just put it out there. I want to make money on my property. I'm going to check all the boxes. I keep going through the funnel. I can upload images. I can do all of put any kind of information there I want. Um, upload a video, and within about a minute or two, I click publish, and it's going to go out into the into the ecosystem and people who are interested in solar, wind, carbon, whatever box I check, they're going to get access to it. They're actually going to get a notification that, hey, Craig listed a property for, they, he wants to receive solar offers in this area, here's how many acres, and it's going to get sent straight away. So there's some very great um, kind of tugs at your heart success stories of folks who were kind of at the end of their rope, didn't know what to do, really needed to make money on the property. We're going to have to sell it off. And that's not what they wanted to do. They had visions of they wanted their grandkids to be on there. They want their kids, their grandkids to be uh, enjoying the property. But it just wasn't making that, the, you know, the balance sheet wasn't working. They threw their listing up. And I can give you this direct quote. This came in last week from a gentleman. I uh, had a conversation with him. I said, Man, you have a really, really good listing here by just simply clicking on his parcel, or he had a, he had a good parcel, um, he turned it into a listing for solar. He emailed us last week, and his direct quote was, thank you very much. I'm glad I posted the listing. You just made my grandkids about $10 million more. Now, he had a very large piece of property. That's going to be a pretty rare case, but these are real-life scenarios that are happening every day. You're not going to get the offer unless you create the listing. So that's that's our pitch there. So um, I appreciate it. I really, really appreciate everybody being on here. Um, if you have more questions, again, go ahead and email those in to uh, Michaela. We will get those turned around to you. If we didn't get a chance to answer them live, please send them in. We'll make sure we get those answered live. Um, again, the link is in the chat to be sent on over to Landgate. Utilize the tool. Um, if you need, if, if you you know want access to the data, it's ten dollars a month, incredibly economic. But at the end of the day, if you're a property owner, just want to create a listing, utilize the free service there and 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 see what your property can do. So, uh, Jordan, Michaela, I appreciate your time, and again, thanks everybody. Uh, we will have another webinar next week, so stay tuned and uh, feel free to go back and look at any of the old webinars that we have. Uh, recorded because if you're interested in solar, any one of those specific resources, we do specific webinars and we have resources for um, those different types of, of revenue potentials. So thanks everybody. And you all have a wonderful uh, afternoon. Thanks.